Armed men have taken control of two airports in the Crimea region. Ukraine's new government says it's an invasion and occupation by Russian forces. Moscow denies any involvement. To try and make sense of the situation, I'm joined by IHS Global Insights Lilith Gevorgyan. Uh, Lilith, thanks for talking with us. Let's start with the latest developments. These armed groups at the Crimean airport. Who are these people? Who's funding them? How are they organized? And who's giving them instructions? Very good questions, and I believe that uh, we don't really have any answers to these questions yet. Um, obviously, the, the latest report that we have is that they haven't uh, themselves disclosed who are they and what their demands are necessarily and where they get their funding. Um, it is, of course, worrying, especially when we're looking into Ukraine facing economic crisis and trying to get IMF and others to come in and support the country. Yeah. Well, let, we'll come on to that in a sec. But, but again, to these, to these men, uh, am I right in, in saying we, they are Russian naval forces? That, that seems to be the latest we're hearing. Have you heard that? We have to see whether this is confirmed. I think that was one of the speculations that has been circulating uh, in the past few days. But we really have to see a confirmation of this. All right, let, let's talk about um, in the, your interpretation of, of Russia's, uh, what has been called quite a mixed message uh, on Ukraine, on Crimea. Is it getting less mixed, that message? Well, I think from Russian perspective, they they are quite concerned as to which path Ukraine will take. Their commercial and political interest uh, suffered significantly after the Orange Revolution, when the government took a clearly anti-Russian stance. This had impact on the on the in Russian investments and the gas flow through Ukraine. So they don't really want to see a repeat of the same scenario. Um, this is why we have heard, for example. So, for example, the President Putin saying that they would like to take part in international efforts uh, to bail out Ukraine. But at the same time, they also have concerns of, um, about the, the ethnic Russians, about the situation in Crimea and eastern uh, Ukraine, where there are many people who believe that Ukraine's future lies with Russia. Mm. So in some ways, they're also under pressure to respond to this um, cries for help, for example, from, sure. uh, from Crimea. Is it, is it fair to say, though, that the, the markets, and we look at the, 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 the Rivia uh, today, up about 5%, the markets are, are taking heart from Russia's stance now on this, on this bailout? Uh, well, I think the markets um, are really closely following anything that is happening in the country, any security, political or economic development. Yeah, but they, they clearly like something they're hearing today, right? Anything that will... Uh, subside the tensions that will have a mitigating impact will obviously be welcomed, whether it comes from IMF and Russia. I think it's really important that Russia is on board with uh, Ukraine's bailout. That will definitely send a very positive message to investors and to markets. Will wh will they get their, the money from the IMF, this $35 billion that they've requested or they said they need, the finance minister has said they need, when will they get that? IMF is dispatching its mission any days now. It will have an independent assessment of what Ukraine actually needs because the temporary government suggested they need 35 US billion dollars. This is slightly high, to my mind, um, of what they actually need. I think what IMF will try to do is, first of all, assess the situation, then work out conditions to, uh, to its loan, and maybe also bring on board other uh, international do donors, probably EU, yeah. um, US, yeah. and other countries. What can you tell us about the money trail? Where, where a lot of this money has gone. Reuters is reporting today that Austria has frozen uh, some assets of, of, of various Ukrainians. Uh, Switzerland, I believe, and others are looking at freezing assets. What, what, what do you know of this? Well, we've heard yesterday reports as well that uh, uh, the, the new authorities are saying that billions have gone missing and they're looking into the businesses that are linked to the, to the uh, former government uh, to find out how much has been uh, channeled uh, through these um, backdoors to different offshore accounts. 
this is a process that will continue for some time and uh, frankly it's really difficult to pinpoint or, or give you uh, an exact figure but um, I'm sure uh, we've all seen that corruption and um, bringing justice and bringing up uh, opening uh, sectors of economy to competition were main messages as well during the protest so the new government will be under pressure mm, to mm. to deliver on this pro uh, on these pledges all right Lilith many thanks Lilith Gavogian of IHS more on Ukraine as the situation evolves I'm Axel Threlfall this is Reuters